Hey, welcome back to Damon's Metal Casting. In this video, we're gonna pack up some sand molds, we're gonna pour some molten aluminum and make some dyes, and then we're gonna take the dyes and put them on a press and do some metal forming to see how that works out. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's the plan of the attack. I went ahead and 3D printed these and gave them a light coat of paint so the sand doesn't really stick to it. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and cast them and make aluminum dyes out of them. So that way they can be put in my 20 ton shop press and we can go ahead and see what type of uh, formations in the steel we can get out of it. Um, you'll actually see me do copper in the video. I had to go ahead and do steel because I was using copper for my sister. She has a jewelry business and she makes jewelry out of copper. And so you'll see how copper forms on these. And then copper is also a little bit harder than silver. So if jewelers wanted to do this, it might work out for them for a little bit before it completely deforms. But doing something like this, it's cheap, it's kind of quick, and it's costing not as near as having something machined out of a block of tool steel or something like that, which would cost quite a bit of money. All right, here we go. This one's the Audi, just like people's belly buttons. This one points out and there's another heart that goes in. So we'll see what the difference of them is. You're gonna know this process is uh, speed it up quite a bit for packing up the mold. I have plenty of other videos that go into in-depth mold packing. I'm also gonna find out in this video as you're watching it that I didn't put a taper on my pattern, so it's gonna tear out the sand a little bit. And um, that's okay, I'll just use the sander to clean it up. That mold came out pretty good. I'm pretty much just looking for the uh, heart and no defects there, and I look like I got it. When I put the bolt together, I always use thick pieces of wood, just so that way it has a good grip and it doesn't cause the sand to push in on itself and deform it or crack it or crumble it. All right, here's the any heart. And again, I just showed it, I'm pulling it out right now, and. And of course, I didn't put any taper on the edges and it, it tore a little sand out. But like I said, I don't really care. I just, I'm just more concerned about the center of that. And it looked like it came out pretty decent. Unfortunately, that little bit of powder on there, I think falls out or burns up. And I actually have a little bit of deformation in the actual casting. Just keep an eye on that and you can see that. Here we go. Here's aluminum parts that I used. Um, those aluminum parts that I have are from car parts that I got at the local salvage yard. And I use my big 20 ton shop press to like bust them up into smaller parts. It's a lot quicker than using a saw on them. Just a side note while I'm getting this ready, that little muffin pan down there, I got that at Hobby Lobby, I think for like 10 bucks. But anyway, I got that because it makes ingots that fit perfectly into those grass fight crucibles in the electric melt furnaces that I got. Viver just gave me a furnace to demonstrate on my site and that little muffin pan is really helpful to get ingots down in size. So um, pretty much from now on, when I pour out stuff, I'll probably pour it into that little muffin pan to make little ingots, so that way I can use them for either or my furnace or the electric melt furnace. Also, um, I take the temperature of the aluminum before I pour it just to make sure it's around there. A lot of people ask uh, what I'm using and I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a video on just things that I use for casting and maybe that'll clear it up and I won't have to have so many um, questions asked by that um, and answer on a one by one basis. All right, here goes the pour. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. Didn't slop it very many places. And I always put my crucible back in the furnace and let everything cool off together so that way the um, it doesn't have thermal shock and crack and maybe it'll last longer. I'm hoping it will. It really got stuck in there this time. I had to go get a screwdriver to pry it out. 
I tried to do a second heart, but it actually got deformed. There's some shrinkage in the metal. And so basically the top die is the one I'm going to salvage from this pour. That one turned out pretty good. That's the any, but see, you can see a little indentation in there where that powder was that I pointed out earlier. And here's the Audi. And that one looks pretty good. No problems there. Here we go, I'm gonna try that one. Fine. Man, that one looks pretty nice. good. Yeah. That's nice. It pressed yeah. in there pretty well. That one actually did a lot better than I thought. All right, here's another one. Helps to have a piece of rubber on there to actually form the metal into the mold or around the mold or the die. Oh, yeah. That one turned out really good. Um, the copper has been annealed, so it actually really forms over the die really well. This was the, the down one, one, so it may have already done something. Oh, yeah. And this is the any heart, and it made a nice little dome on it. it. Made a little dome heart. That looks pretty good. And there's the copper pieces that um, that we did, and you can see that one was already cut out, and I think my sister was planning on cutting these out and using them in her jewelry. So, um, you know, I was just doing this video to throw out an idea. That way, if you're into making small forms or whatnot, you can... Be able to do that and without expensive uh what do you call them tool tooling dies that probably cost a lot to machine this one looks better when you move it around you can actually see it kind of was deep hey you made it to the end of the video but guess what didn't make it to the end of the video the little rubber piece that i have i went through a couple of those because they just get smashed to bits plus i think they use like a urethane to really actually make it function well and then the other thing that didn't do so well to the end of the video was I, I uh, pressed some steel sheet a few times with the die and it definitely deformed it. So let me get you a close up of that. And so here it is. And when you turn it sideways, you can see that these are supposed to be pretty much a copy of each other. And you can see that the aluminum one did get crushed down a little bit, even as a little concave. But anyway, it held up a lot longer than... Um, you know, a 3D print PLA, because I tried one of those and it just completely smashed out the first time. So uh, thanks again for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it gave you some ideas that you want to do. And uh, see you next time. Take care.